Hi, welcome to another Forbes 2 on 2. I'm Aaron Perlitt, and I'm joined today by Brett McKay, who's the founder of The Art of Manliness, which is actually one of the most popular online destinations for manly content. Uh, Brett, tell us a, a little bit about yourself as well as The Art of Manliness and, and the site demographics. Well, uh, I'm Brett McKay. I'm, I'm based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, the site, I started in 2008 just basically as a hobby. I, I was doing this when I was in law school, and it picked up steam. The reason why I started it was I was tired of all the men's magazines and the content that was put out there for men. It just didn't really speak to me as a man. I didn't want to learn how to get you know eight pack abs or you know what's the five thousand dollar shoot I got to have this season or ten sex tips I, that, to make my woman you know swoon or whatever. Uh, I just got tired of that. So I started the men's magazine that I always wanted to read. Um, so we explore topics that are relevant to, you know, men in their, who are just starting out in, in adulthood and even men who are older. And we, we, tr you know, our, our brand on the site is, if you go there, you'll notice that it's sort of old fashioned, it's sort of, it has like a nostalgic feel to it. We use a lot of old images and old photos. Um, I just like that. I'm just sort of, I mean, it's just some, something that appeals to me and I know it appeals to a lot of people because like. When I, a lot of the inspiration for the site comes from my grandfather, um, so I try to kind of harken back to that time a little bit, and uh, I don't know, it, it's just fun. Uh, Demographics-wise, uh, we have we get over uh, 10 million page views a month now. Um, most of that traffic is coming from the United States; about 80 percent of it is, uh, and then 20 percent comes from just other countries. Um, around the world. I mean, it's, I'm surprised that, you know, who's reading our blog. I've got emails from men in India. Uh, we had one guy uh, who wrote us from the middle of the Egyptian revolution uh, and said, I want to write a blog post for your blog on the lessons in manliness, manliness I learned from being involved in the Egyptian revolution. That was really cool. Um, and, you know, but we do have some lady readers as well, some lady fans women who, I mean, because a lot of the content we write is applicable to both men and women. It's like lifestyle content, you know, how to improve your career, how to ma manage your money. Um, but a lot of women like the blog because we're pitching an idea of masculinity that you don't see out there like in other men's magazines where it's all about seduce, seducing women and like this superficial stuff like, you know, to be a man, you got to have this car. Um, we try to have some respect for women. Um, so yeah, we got the, the lady readers as well. So that's the, the demographics on the site, um, and we're doing it full time. You know, this is what we do for a living. So, what uh, what tends to be your strongest age bracket that you see coming to the site? It's a lot of younger guys uh, in the you know eighteen to probably thirty. That's the our biggest demographic. Um, it's just a lot of guys who are looking for advice on how to be a man. They're trying to make that transition into adulthood, and unfortunately, in our Society today, we don't have a lot of like rites of passage, or we really don't do a good job of preparing young people for adulthood. I mean, just like basic knowledge that you'd think would get passed down uh, just naturally, it doesn't. So you have guys looking for advice on how to tie a tie, how to shave, uh, you know, how to apply for a job, how to ask for a raise. I mean, just sort of basic life skills. Um, we try to provide it to in a way that's relevant to them and that appeals to them. And and I think when when a lot of people hear the name The Art of Manliness, they might think that it's more of a, like a humor blog, but it's really not. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, a factual, informational blog for, for men of all ages, correct? Yeah, definitely. We're definitely earnest with what we do. We're, um, we're, we're, our whole goal is to help men become better men, improve their lives in every aspect. But we do inject some humor into it. Um, we, don't, we don't take ourselves too seriously where, you know, we always try to put, you know, fun stuff in about being a man. Like we'll do a post like how to hail a taxi cab in New York City um, and then we'll add like like a man to it, you know. I mean it's just kind of goofy. Uh, but we're, we're, in the end we're trying to provide useful information to people. Give us a sense of um, – I mean obviously you get pitched a lot by PR people uh, and I'm sure you have people coming to you with proposed programs, brand integration. Tell us how that's, how that's typically worked on the site and, and – and what kind of brand integration you've had? So yeah, we get pitches all the time from companies who want to uh, feature their product on our, our site. We ignore most of them pretty much because we, we work with Federated Media, which is a, a big online, uh, independent online publisher ad network. Uh, they represent sites like Boing Boing, 
uh, Business Insider, you know, some of the bigger independent publishers, online publishers. And uh, they do all our ad campaigns for us. And in addition to like the banner advertising that you typically see on websites, one of the things they also do is sponsored content. And what sponsored content is, is a brand will approach federated media and say, we have a, a campaign we want to work on or promote that has this theme. All right. So let's, it could be like a Gillette or a Dockers or a, a Dodge Ram, right? And federated media will come to us and say, okay, um, Dockers has this campaign with this theme. Can you develop a series of posts that have that, has that same theme? Um, we don't write it's, – it's not necessarily that we're writing about Dockers. We don't. We just write posts that we would have written anyways um, and just incorporate that theme in there. And then in the post, we'll have something, you know, this post brought to you by Dockers to check out what they're doing, see this. Um, so it's a way for us to, you know, support the site. Um, but it also gives brands a chance to integrate their message into what we're doing in a pretty – in a kind of non-intrusive way. Uh, we've had what's great about that is we, we haven't had a lot of complaints from people about it. I was worried that people would be like, oh, you guys are selling out, blah, 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 blah. But a lot of people actually, I mean, if it's done well, people appreciate it. And I think it's a plus for, it's a win-win for everybody um, because it, a lot of times we try, we work really hard on develop, you know, writing our content so that it's good. You know, it's not just kind of this spam stuff. Um, so brands kind of can attract or attach their name to that, that, that content. You know, an example, you know, for an example of that sort of sponsored content, we did one with a series with Dodge Ram where um, it was like it was just basically outdoor skills, how to be a handyman sort of thing. That was their ad campaign theme. And so we just wrote some posts that we would have written anyways about, you know, camping. So we did you know, a post on um, you know, how to, you know, tents, you, types, different types of shelters you can you can pitch when you're out camping, uh, how to prepare for a camping trip. And all Dodge got was just a little banner at the beginning of the post that said, this post brought to you by Dodge. And check out this link for such and such uh, thing. So that's sort of the brand integration that we've done on the site. Um, we, don't, we, we haven't really gotten into like writing a post just about a product, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, we get those pitches all the time where a company will write us and send us out a blast, you know, just a an email that's a form email and saying, you know, we're excited to announce the launch of this, you know, X product. And I, we know your readers will, would be interested in this as well. Will you would like to write about this? We can send over a press release that you can just publish. And, you know, we just don't do that. I, I just don't, cause a lot of times the pitches like aren't even for our audience. Like we've had one that was like the, the most, the funniest one was there's a startup company that develops packages like care packages for women who are going through PMS, right? So it's like this, like it's, it's a basket that has like tampons and like, a, a, you know, movies or like chocolate and a tea. And uh, you're supposed to like, you know, send this to a woman who's having, you know, her, her time of the month. And like, we had a company that pitches to us. I'm like, you know, that's probably not going to go over well with our site. And if a guy actually like gave his wife like, hey, honey, I signed you up for this care package and you get once a month. Uh, full of you know help you get through your PMS. I'm sure that guy's not going to be on their wife's or girlfriend's uh, good list. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, Brett, very good. Thank you very much, uh, Brett McKay of the Art of Manliness. Very interesting stuff. Good luck to you, and thank you for joining us on Forbes Two One Two. Thanks for having me.